and keep that blood from a side down. You at there, ladies and gents. How's it going? I've now owned Lord Vader, aka my Motor Gutsy V7, for seven years now. So I thought it was about time I did some kind of review on the bike. Now, I'm not very good at bike reviews, I'm not very good at any reviews, I get jumbled up and disjointed, and that's one of the reasons why you're getting a voiceover now, instead of uh, the in-helmet audio, as I was recording this ride. Um, yeah, uh, I couldn't get my thoughts in the right orders, and uh, it just didn't come out with very much sense. So you've got this, a voiceover, with me riding on the bike. So, what do I think of the bike? Well, just by the fact that I've had this bike seven years, the longest I've ever owned a motorcycle says something about it. But as you can see, I've altered it slightly from how it came out of the box. So, it's kind of got its own little stamp on it. It's my bike, there's no other like it. What was it like when it came out of the box? It was bloody marvellous! It's such a characterful little engine, and such a playful chassis too. Even with its slight flaws, it's... There's something about the motor good team that once you've sat on one and ridden one for a little bit, you just fall in love. Now the box, this thing is not exactly a speed demon. I think the V7 1, which is what mine is, it's not a V7 1, but the V7, which is what mine is, uh, started off with about 52 brake horsepower or something like that. Uh, I don't really believe that it ever had that, but mine definitely doesn't with these exhaust pipes on. I think mine's down to about 45 brake horsepower now. <laughs> but they look pretty. Um, yes, so out of the box, it's got about 50 brake horsepower, and you'd think on paper that that's a bit rubbish. That's a bit rubbish indeed. Um, yeah, it's also only got a single front disc, which you'd think on paper, that's a bit rubbish. That's a bit rubbish indeed. And it weighs a ton. And you'd think on paper, that's a bit rubbish. That's a bit rubbish indeed too. It also comes with crappy small demon tyres, which are never going to set the world on fire, especially not in the cold. Uh, we'll get to them in a second. So yeah, on paper this bike is rubbish. Absolutely rubbish. The Triumph's got more power than it, and probably weighs similar sort of amounts. Um, yes, yeah, so why would you go for a motor this? Well basically, it's worth far more than the sum of its parts. Those of you that have ridden one for any period of time will know that it's just such a peach. It's just a fantastic little motorcycle. Now I can wax lyrical all day long about the character of this bike and uh, try and sell it to you. But I think those of you that are watching this video are probably pretty much already sold the bike and you might well have already had a demo. But they are lovely. All I can say about it right now is they are lovely. So if you haven't had a demo, go get one. So I've sort of mentioned that it hasn't got a huge amount of power, but is that a problem in real riding? I don't think so, and most of you who've seen any of my other videos of the bike know that I can hustle this thing along. I'm just going to show you a little clip now of when the bike was in its standard form down at Brands Hatch. And it definitely had no problem in the group I was in of keeping up and overtaking things. I even overtook a Fireblade and an RGB250 as well as some track bikes. Now I'm not trying to say that this bike is going to do that in everyday situations. I was in novice group, so uh, you've got to give the rides of those bikes a little bit of a, uh, um, a pass. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, the bike is absolutely fantastic on track. I can guarantee you it will have a smile on your face if that's what you wanted to do with the bike. The only problems it does have is a little bit of ground clearance issues where the uh, side stabs and lug ground out and cornering as you will see in a later clip we go around Anglesey with this very same bike but in the current state that it's in now with uh, the weight reduction and bits of what was done to it to the frame and then to right as wheels and that sort of stuff. We'll do a little walk round of the bike as well in a bit and you can see sort of the state the bike's in now um, and if you are more interested in what's going on with the bike I will link a video at the end doing a proper walk round of the bike when I've just finished the build. So yeah, it's not short of power, it could obviously do with a little bit more power, everything could. Everything's better with more power, but it doesn't need it, and you'll never find you'll really miss it, except for when you've been outgunned by a GSX-R1000 down the straights. <laughs> um, but that doesn't really happen very often. Other bits and bobs about the bike that make it a peach, the brakes, they're amazing. Now this model is the previous ones before all ABS rules and laws come in, so this one doesn't have ABS, which I actually really like. I like the fact that it hasn't got any rider aids on it. It keeps it real, it means that you're riding it rather than it doing things to save you. Um, and yeah, it doesn't need ABS. You've just got to let the tyres warm up and ride 
sensibly until we've got a feel of everything. But yeah, the front brakes are incredible. They easily outpower the tyres and the rear brake is to have got the best rear brake in the business. I've never had a motorcycle with a rear brake that's as good as the rear brake on this. And I really love that. I really struggle with crap rear brakes. I've got a duff ankle anyway. So having one that works really well means that I get an extra bit of feel from it when I'm trying to use it with my duff ankle. So yeah, I get a massive boner for the rear brake on this bike. The standard suspension is not much to write home about. Most people, if they have these bikes long term, do upgrade the suspension on them. I've upgraded the rear suspension to Hagons for the adjustables and uh, I chose those ones mainly for the looks because obviously custom bike and things like that, but they are an improvement over the standard. Um, my front forks, now I've gone the business on these, I've got KTEC fork cartridges installed in mine which transform the bike even more. Um, but are they worth the cost? Ugh, I don't know on a bike like this, that would be up to the owner. I love them, but do I need them? You, you saw me pushing the bike around Brad's hatch, no problem at all on standard suspension. So, yeah. <laughs> Whether you need them or not, that's entirely up to your budget to decide. As for the ergonomics of the bike, out of the box it's quite comfy. The saddle's a little bit hard and uh, on the longer journeys you do get a little bit tired. Now when I got the bike, uh, once it was running, I took it around Europe um, just at the start of the season sort of thing. Uh, went from Dover, Calais, down to Switzerland, into Italy and then along the south coast of France down to Spain, to Barcelona, and then across up to Bilbao where I got the ferry back to Portsmouth. And the bike was absolutely amazing through the whole trip, never a problem except for in Monaco where the traffic was so horrid the engine got quite hot and the clutch started to slip a little bit. Now I do think that the clutch is a weak point on the bike, but that was in 2013 and it's still going fine now. <laughs> My bike isn't a high mileage bike, I haven't done millions of miles on it, that's because I have multiple motorcycles, so I'm not riding this every day through the slime and stuff like that, and you'll see why with the custom work I've had done on it, because it's not a wet weather bike, <laughs> it's not a wet weather bike at all anymore, but if you keep it standard, keep it sensible, you can ride this all year round, no problem at all, you just need to keep on top of the rust a little bit, and get the ACF 50 on it so it protects it from the sort of crap. So yeah, you can do miles on it, you can do track days on it, it's an amazing all-round motorcycle that just doesn't have very large numbers in the things that you'd probably think that you need to have large numbers in. The only thing it has got large numbers in is the weight, and it is a heavy bike for its size. But once you swing a leg over it, you don't really notice it, you don't really notice it at all. And once you get used to the way it handles, you can just hustle it around all the country lanes you want. Um, yeah, just get them tyres warm and you're golden. A lot of people have changed their tyres out. I've stuck with the Sport Demons because a lot of people have changed their tyres out and they change them out before they've worn out the Sport Demons and you can buy them cheap second hand on eBay, which is kind of what I've done with this ever since I've got it. Because, yeah, <laughs> why would you not use things that other people don't want when you can cope with them? They are crap in the cold and in the wet. Um, there's no getting around that. But once they do come up to temperature, they're absolutely fine. So, yeah, just respect them a little bit. And because it's only got a little amount of horsepower, you're never really in huge danger of them stepping out on you. But like I say, a lot of people do change their tyres, and uh, maybe that's something you'd want to do if this was a bike you were going to be buying. The standard bars are in a nice position for a person of my height. Now I'm five and a half foot with an inside leg of about 30, 31 inches. And uh, yeah, I mean, everything about this bike fits me, and that's one of the reasons it, it probably has stuck with me for so long. Although some of the changes I've done have changed the ride height a little bit. But yeah, um, for some of my size, this is a cracking little bike. Cracking little bike. I keep referring it to it as a little bike. It's a 750cc V twin, which isn't a little at all, but the bike is quite diminutive. Sitting on motorways and all that sort of stuff, with the cans I've got on it, it does get a little bit noisy, it does get a little bit grating on the longer runs, and uh, I do suggest if you do change the pipes to anything like I've got, that you definitely get some earplugs. But if you just ride it around town, having noisy pipes and stuff, it's just a little bit of fun, isn't it? And uh, I think mine sounds great. The standard cans, however, have got a lovely little burble to them, both in town and out, and you would never find them offensive on your ears on longer journeys either. Obviously, earplugs are a good idea for the wind blast, but as far as the engine noise goes, it wouldn't upset you at all. 
bike will cruise at sort of 70, 80 miles an hour, absolutely fine, no problem at all. And the lack of fairing for me, I mean, I'm a fan of bikes without fairings. I think they're so much more involving in the environment. But yep, I, I could cruise all day on this. In fact, I did. I rode down to Cornwall for lunch um, a year ago and come back again the same day. That was a round trip of about 650 miles and uh, it was amazing. <laughs> the lunch was pretty good too. It was a little late because <laughs> I, I left the house quite late but yeah you can do miles on this. I did 650 miles that day with just a stop for lunch and fuel. Talking of fuel, it's got a humongous petrol tank and in standard form when it's fueling nice, mine doesn't, um, mine drinks the fuel now, uh, in standard form when it's fueling nice you can easily get 250 miles out of a tank. Um, yeah. When I was going around Europe, when the bike was all lovely, I was getting some really impressive mileage. Uh, yeah. So this little clip I'm showing now is of me over at Anglesey on the bike, as it is now with the noisy exhaust pipes and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I was in the wrong group. I did drop down into Novice again later on. The day was full of ACU riders, so um, yeah, it was very difficult to, to be in a group that was right for me. Oh, I've only had another 100 horsepower! <laughs> <laughs> this game is silly! Um, even some of the riders in Novice Group were lapping oh, bikes because yeah, no, no. they were doing practicing for the racing that weekend, which is a bit naughty I think, but that's a different conversation for a different day. Knee down! Yay, knee down! <laughs> oh man, I've never had my knee down on this bike before! Awesome stuff! Oh, such as you can see I had a right giggle doing it, um, I've left the audio in for that one because uh, yeah, it just shows how much fun I'm having um, and if you are interested in watching that full video I'll put a link at the end oh, to that end, video. End, 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 oh yeah! <laughs> 40 days of fasting! <laughs> I'm such a pun artist! <laughs> <laughs> just gonna have a quick walk around the bike now um, just to sort of show you what we've got with it now compared to what it was as standard I'll try and put a picture up of the bike when it was standard I don't think I've got any videos of it per se um, but yeah uh, so as you can see I've chopped down the rear end and put a single seat basically it's the original seat just with a cut and shut job with a middle bit taken out so it all fits on the same pan and stuff like that and it's all locks and all that sort of stuff um, yep I've got custom paint on it and uh, custom tail neural underneath the uh, the mudguard there um, I've got the Kineo wheels which are tubeless spoke rims and they are lovely a little bit lighter than standard and I think they just look absolutely gorgeous changed the uh, indicators on the rear I've got some LED ones which are quite nicely hidden as you can see I've got the rear shocks which are Hagons and the front forks are KTEC internals on the standard um, tubes I've changed the dashboard over this one's a motor gadget micro dash and uh, you can see I've changed the bars as well to Renthal's they're still the same size still the same sweep I just wanted black ones compared to the chrome ones that the bike came with and uh, I've put some bar end mirrors on it and uh, some flippy levers this isn't a walk round of my bike, this isn't to show you what I've done to mine. Do check out the other video that I've linked to at the end if that is of interest to you. Um, otherwise, yeah. yeah. As far as the engine goes, mine's pretty standard. It's got a K&N air filter and these silly exhaust pipes. I've not had it remapped. I haven't had really many problems with the engine running and stuff like that. But like I say, it is down on power and it could probably do with a flash of the ECU or something to get it running with these exhaust pipes. But I don't know whether these exhaust pipes are staying with the threat of noise cameras and things like that on the world to us motorcycles, so I might have to change them. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little sort of not review as such overview of the Motocutsi V7 and how much fun it's been for me over the last seven years. I don't know whether its days are numbered with me, it might be for the right price. So if it is a bike that you think you could be interested in, why not drop me a PM either on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram and uh, yeah, we might be able to come to a deal. Otherwise, this bike can probably stick with me until I or it dies. It's a cracking little motorcycle. Um, but yeah, hit me up if you are interested in taking this off my hands and um, yeah, we can sort of have a chat. If you haven't done so already, please do click that subscribe button. It'd be awesome to have you come back for some more. Um, 
don't just ride this motor good see I've got a little green laning machine a beta out 4.0 I've also got a Triumph 765 street triple which is much fun um, yeah and I'm thinking about having a little change around in my garage as well maybe in the next year maybe 18 months or so so um, yeah there's exciting things afoot with the channel so uh, do click that subscribe button if you haven't already anyhow if you like this video if you like the motor good v7 you like anything about motor good please click that little thumbs up, that would be awesome. And if you didn't, if you hate everything in the world, you rubbish and you smell of cabbage, feel free to give it a little thumbs down, that's all cool, all cool in this school. Or whatever you do, please do drop in a comment, it would be awesome to hear from you. If you've got a V7, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, and if you're thinking about getting one, feel free to drop any questions, I'll try and answer them as best as I can. Anyhow, you ride safe, take care, and I shall catch you. Keep that bar, Ramasan. Hey, no, you gotta keep that bar, Ramasan.